Hello! In this video I'm going to show you some more of the options of the low terrain system. So we already have our terrain uh, that are generated but I want to show you some of the um, what some of the uh, options in the inspector do. Uh, I'll skip over the terrain size and height because those are pretty obvious. The chunk size uh, defines how big each individual square of the terrain is. And the best way to do this is to actually uh, unhide the chunks in the hierarchy. So um, I'm going to uncheck this box, regenerate the, the terrain, and you will see here in the hierarchy um, that all the chunks of the terrain are now uh, showing up as their own game objects. That's going to be useful for you if you need uh, to do something with the, the individual chunks like turning them on or off or um, you know changing some of the data by hand. Uh, and, but if you can see here, I've selected a chunk. Or I'll, I'll say a more interesting one. I'll grab this one. I selected a chunk, and you know you can see me switch through the LOD levels right here, right? By just highlighting them, you can see the lowest LOD level for like when you're really far away, and the highest LOD level. The um, the uh, size of those squares is defined by this variable right here, right, the chunk size. So the more squares you have, um, the more the terrain will be perfectly adapted to your view frustum, uh, but also the more game objects you're potentially drawing, and at that point you're not certain, you know, uh, how well the dynamic batching is going to work for you. So, you know, it's a trade-off uh, in performance, and, you know, the best way to figure out what works best for you is really just to to play with that number. Um, the base resolution is the size of the uh, edges of the small little squares in the terrain map, right? So these points are eight units across right now. Um, and the LOD levels is, you know, the number of versions of a chunk that the system generates, right? So um, the the further you want to be able to draw things, or the more optimized you want to be, uh, the more LOD levels you can generate. I mean, there's probably a diminishing returns somewhere. Again, the best is to just uh, play around with the numbers. I'm going to uh, recheck this because I don't want to see all the chunks in my uh, in my hierarchy. But I will now show you the um, what you can do with the materials. So as I said in the previous video, the uh, terrain by default uses vertex color to uh, determine the, the color of the terrain and the shader that is used to render this uh, shader material here um, only uses vertex color. It does not actually use uh, UV coordinates for the terrain. However, if you do want to use your own material and require UV coordinates, you can absolutely do so. All you have to do is just uncheck this box here, which you notice makes the source color map um, inspector entry disappear because it's not needed for generation anymore. Um, and if I regenerate this, but don't change these materials, you will see that the terrain has now lost vertex colors, right? There we are, right? There's no vertex color data. It uses, you know, the default, which is white. However, I can now apply my own material to the terrain. So I will do this. I'll just create a new material. Terrain opaque. And I will just happen to select the same um, color map <laughs> that I would have used for the generation, apply it to my material. And now, um, assign my material to the terrain right here. And now my terrain has, you know, essentially looks the same as before. Well, except my material is more uh, smooth than it was. There we go. That looks more like it. Um, the terrain looks the same as before, except now we're using UV coordinates, uh, possibly, you know, more complicated uh, um, surface shaders, anything you want. Maybe you can add. Uh, detail map or you know anything anything you want really I could use let's say for instance uh, 
add a mission map. There we go. Now I've made, you know, some of the terrain bright or emit light, essentially. So there's some advantages to this. Uh, hmm, what happened there? Interesting. I don't want a mission. There we go. Hmm. Um, you know, we've made the, the terrain use its own custom material. Uh, it's going to be slightly less um, fast to render than before. Our mesh is going to be a little bit bigger because we're not storing UV coordinates for all our vertices. But it allows you to do your own, um, use your own, do whatever. Um, the one thing that I do uh, have to show you is that whenever you use your own custom material, you also need to specify a fade material, the the alpha material. It's the material that is used to, you know, fade in and out the LED levels. Fortunately, it's very easy to do so if you're using surface shaders. You can just duplicate the opaque one. All right, I'm going to rename it to Fade and change its type right here to Fade. And now I can apply the Fade material right here. Um, and now if I run this, you should see absolutely no difference than with the vertex colored materials. Now, um, let's look at some more of the options. The last option, generation option, that is, that I want to show you is the um, randomness. So if you look at this terrain, and um, you can see that it looks, you know, fairly uniform, grid-like. I mean, it is, right? That, that is how the terrain was generated. But uh, we can sort of help this along with those two values, the Y offset and the XZ offset. So if I first generate without Y offset, uh, you'll see exactly how, um, how important those values are. And there we go. You can see like these areas that are really flat, um, you know, sort of like terraced a little bit. Um, you're losing a lot of the, the uh, faceted look of the terrain. Um, and you know, since you're paying for it <laughs> by having you know uh, individual triangles, you might as well see them. So this is what those two values do. The the y offset clearly moves the vertices up and down like this, and you know improves things already. And the x z offset moves the vertices you know left and right. The only thing well, I'm going to show you here is the y offset right with the higher value looks more interesting you could say right um, the XZ offset I'm gonna reset this and set the XZ offset and regenerate the mesh we'll move the vertices left and right which also breaks up the uniformity um, the only thing with the XZ offset is that it won't affect the collision geometry so what this means is that if you are going to be dropping a character in your environment, for instance, and expect the character to follow the, the ground precisely, you probably don't want XZ offset. Um, the reason is the, the collider uh, is an optimized terrain collider. In fact, it's Unity's terrain collider, and it wants its vertices to be you know on a grid perfectly aligned. So the y offset it can deal with but the xz offset not so much if you're dealing with like you know a flying game like this one is you can uh, go right ahead and have xz offset and you probably not see the difference if you are dealing with you know um, putting characters on the ground or expecting you know proper collision then uh, you probably don't want the xz offset but in any case, you can see how it breaks up the, the uniformity, even though things are on a grid, because the vertices are moved around some, it doesn't look nearly as uh, uniform, repetitive. And those are the generation settings.
the runtime settings right here we've already looked at a couple of them uh, and the only remaining ones are the LOD distance which is the distance at which the LOD levels will switch in and out um, and here it's set to 500 units and then it goes in powers of 2 or it multiplies by 2 so this the next LOD level will switch at 1000 and then 2000 and 4000 um, the transition time is how long it takes for the LODs to swap and so for instance if I set it to 0 and run the game you will see like they will swap immediately you know essentially popping in to uh, to place right, right there see how they pop in um, whereas if you make it really long then you know they'll take a long time but you might see some strange Z fighting while both levels are, are visible right there see there's a little bit of like jittering because the levels are being drawn on top of one another typically half a second to a second is uh, a decent uh, transition time the flip-flop percent is just there to prevent uh, flip-flopping right so uh, like if you're sitting right at the at 500 units it won't just like go between two LOD levels back and forth as you just sort of like you know cross the line back and forth um, this is there to to just guarantee that you can leave the value as it is or play with it it's it's all up to you that's it for the advanced settings of the low poly terrain system thank you for watching